testing. Am I on? I hit mute, so I don't know if I'm on or not. Testing, one, two. It's not on yet. Turn me on, brother. Testing, testing, four, five, six. Testing, testing, eight, nine, ten. Testing, testing, one, two, three. There, now it's on. Maybe I'm just down too low. Testing, testing, one. I think it might be pointed more at your face. It's kind of like that way. Good, that way. Testing, testing, one. Is that, maybe yeah, you just have to turn it up a little bit. You can hear me? Can everybody hear me? Can you, can you hear me now? Huh? Look in my direction if you can hear me. Look in my direction if you can hear me. Nobody's looking. <laughs> you, can, you can hear me back there? Praise the Lord, everybody. I'd whistle, but I can't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank God for air conditioning. That's all I can say. Amen. Thank God we're, we're here and gathered together in the house of the Lord and, and able to be with one another and to be with the Lord. Amen. Uh, remember Sister One Arm, the God healer? She's going to smack me with that arm when she gets the use of it. Continue to remember the Harpers. Uh, remember Pastor Harper and, and them that are with him on their way back. I think they're leaving tomorrow. Leaving Saturday. I don't know. They'll, they'll be back for Sunday, though. So remember them. Remember all our uh, senior believers. And remember the church family as a whole that we get healing and get strength and get super filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> um, any other requests, Sister Janet? Who? Brandon? Yeah, remember him. I want to hug you, but I want to smack him at the same time. <laughs> Brother Scott? Amen. Any unspokens? Amen. Brother Alex, would you lead us in prayer, please? say amen. I don't think there's any announcements. We got anything going on that I probably forgot about. <laughs> amen. All right then, let's get started. The lesson I titled it meekness. How many knows what meekness is? Yeah, yeah, that's what I've always been taught, and I agree with it. I, I don't disagree with it, and it is a form of humbleness, and it is a form of gentleness, and it is uh, a character, characteristic of the love of God, and that's what I taught on, and I, you don't, we don't really hear a lot of messages on that, a lot of thoughts on, on that, because, and I think it's because, well, especially in 2022, we just want to speak our mind and let it rip, so to speak. Whatever, whatever it is, you know, you got to deal with my attitude and my issue. And, and, and as God's people, 
that's not the attitude we should have. Amen. We should have the attitude that Jesus had. Amen. And, and I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking about Moses and Jesus. I compared them a lot in the scripture because they're really the greatest example of, of meekness that you can have. The only difference is Moses blew it a couple times and Jesus didn't. And, and I was thinking about these two guys and how many knows that Moses had the first GPS system? He had a pillar of fire and a cloud of smoke to direct him. And where it went, he followed. How many know that Jesus had the first fish tracker <laughs> or fish collar? <laughs> he knew exactly where to cast out the, the thing, didn't he? That's not, well, that's okay. And he had the first metal detector. He didn't go have to go hunt for it. It came to him, right? The, the coin in the fish's mouth. That's just pretty cool. I have to go out with a machine and bleep, 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 bleep. He just said, it's in that fish over there. Go get it. That's the kind of God that we serve. And even though we have and they had that kind of power, they had to learn meekness. I have learned over the years, meekness is not something that you're born with. You have to cultivate it. And just because you step on the accord of a vacuum doesn't mean you should get upset. Or whatever gets your hair on the back of your neck standing up. I think meekness is one of the hardest things that we as Christians have to deal with. We... It's amazing that we don't hear more about it because with meekness or power under control, as we're taught, power under control. I have the power to do what I want, but I don't. Right? Jesus had the power to, to do anything he wanted to do, and yet he didn't. He did not. He refused. He always did those things that pleased his father. How many can say that? I wish I could. I know, we've always, I've always been taught never let anybody know your weaknesses. Well, I want you to know something. One of the things I struggle with is meekness. Because sometimes I lose it. Don't I? You can say yes. Everybody knows. <laughs> Sometimes we just don't have the strength or fortitude to shut our mouth. Is that a nice way of putting that? That's too blunt, isn't it? You, I'm going to be blunt tonight, and I'm not going to pick on you, Brother Alex. I decided I'm going to pick on me. <laughs> it's hard for us sometimes to contain the anger and the wrath and the emotions that are within us and we just have to let them loose yeah, not so much we shouldn't and especially if we have the Holy Ghost right the Holy Ghost will help us control the things that we in the flesh cannot that's the advantage that we have we have the Holy Ghost Moses was said in the book of Numbers chapter 12 that he was very meek I think one place it said he was the meekest man around. And yet we find in Scripture two places that I can find that he, he blew it. <laughs> he lost it. And one of them cost him his life, his, his, his place. How do I say? He wasn't allowed to enter in the promised land when he could have because he lost his temper. When, when God told him to call the people together, he said, I want you to speak to the rock. Numbers chapter uh, tw uh, 21. I want you to speak to the rock like you did before. You smote it, but now I want you to talk to it. And he was so mad and so angry, he smote it. The nice thing about this story, if there's going to be a nice side, is that God still honored his word and what he did. 
and gave the people what they needed. The other time he lost it was he threw the tablets of the Ten Commandments down, didn't he? And then he had to go write them. <laughs> Double work. God said, I didn't break them, you did. You write them. <laughs> yeah, and he killed a man. And so we see that if we do lose it, so to speak, we're not in bad company. We're pretty good company. Because everybody I know has at one point or another not been able to not lose it. I guess that's a nice way of putting it, right? They, we've lost it at some point or another. Maybe, if you're lucky, you were by yourself. But most of the time, that's not how it happens, is it? James said, 3.13, Who is a wise man, and who is endued with knowledge among you? Let him show it out of a good lifestyle or a good conversation, his works with meekness of wisdom. Let him show it out of a good lifestyle or a good conversation, his meekness of wisdom. What's that mean? Let me put this in, in, in my verbiage so you understand. If I see you do something wrong, I, I shouldn't take my Bible, baseball bat, two by four, I beam, and beat you over the head with it. If I'm spiritual, the Bible says, Paul said to the Galatians in chapter 6, Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in... Oh, not with a baseball bat, but with meekness. Knowing, knowing one thing, it could be you. It could be you. And more than likely, it probably should be, right? First <laughs> Thessalonians 2 7 says but we were, we were gentle among you even as a nurse cherith, cherisheth a child we were meek we were under control we didn't get mad because you were screaming and hollering because you were hungry we didn't throw you across the room because you, you dirtied your diaper we, 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 we cherished you we took care of you we understood we were power under control. We did not let our emotions, the fact that I had a bad day, trump everything else and, and go off on you. That, that doesn't help you, does it? Nor does it help me. So we need to learn to add meekness to beautify our lives so that others can see it and say, wow, look at what they're going through and they haven't lost it. I would have surely lost it if it wasn't for the grace of God, right? Psalms 147 verse 6 says, The Lord lifts up the meek. He casts down the wicked to the ground. The Lord lifts up the meek. He holds them up. The Bible it says in Psalms that he will beautify them with salvation. In other words, that God will take, if we keep our lives power under control, when we do go through a situation, God will deliver us. God will save us from that circumstance. He'll deliver us and, and help us through it and make everybody to see how good He is because of what He does for us. Psalms 149, verse 4 it says, for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. The New Living Translation puts it like this. For the Lord delights in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. He crowns the humble with victory. How many want to be victorious? Amen. Be gentle. Be gentle. Be power under control. Have a place in your life where you say, no, I'm not going to act like that. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be what God wants me to be. Let me, let me read a scripture for you. Two of them, actually. Philippians 2, 7 through 9. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And was made unto the likeness of a man. 
And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a, a name above every name. What was he really saying about Jesus? He was saying Jesus was power under control. He was saying he was meek. He was saying that he could have done, he had, he could have made himself a very reputable man and very well known. And he was well known anyhow, wasn't he? In his time. He, he, he did not make himself a reputation. But more often than not, you see Jesus saying, don't tell anybody. Just go see the priest. Keep your mouth shut. Don't tell him what happened. Just go show yourself. Don't tell him I did this. It's not my time yet, Mom. Don't do this. It's, don't tell anybody I did this. Right? That's what Jesus said. And that's what we should do. That's power under control. We could brag all day long, right? Well, maybe some of us could. But power under control says, no, don't do that. Keep yourself out of the picture. Exalt God, not you. And he took upon him... I like this. He took upon him the attitude of a servant. And that's what we should have. Even though we live, we're living in a day and an age where people seem to be entitled or believe they're entitled, we as the people of God need to take on the attitude of a servant. I'm, I'm here to help. I'm here to lift up. I'm here, here to serve. I'm here to, to help. Somebody says, well, what, what do you do at the church? Whatever is necessary. Whatever has to be done. Whatever. And that's the attitude that Jesus had. I will do whatever I'm called to do. I will humble myself and become obedient even to the death of the cross. You've got to understand that Jesus didn't have to die. He could have called 10,000 angels, right? He could have changed the entire scope of everything at the click of a finger, had he chose. But he chose to be obedient rather than to look at his life and say, this is what I want, and this is the way I want it to go. Jesus said, not my will, power under control. Not my will, Father, but yours. I'll do what you want me to do. 1 Peter 2, 21 through 23 says, for even thereunto were you called, be Christ also, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should walk in his footsteps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Question, how many can say they do that all the time? No, you can't, either can I. Because somebody, sometimes somebody wants to, says, somebody says something to me and I just can't keep my mouth shut. Okay, I just have to say something back to it. Doesn't happen often, unless you're Sister Linda, then it happens more often than not. But sometimes we need to we need to speak our mind because I believe that meekness is not a passive trait. It's an active trait. It's that action to it. It just doesn't t roll over and take everything. There comes a point where you say, yeah, no more. Jesus lost his temper and, and beat up the money changers and threw them out of the temple. Or did he lose it? Did he do that with control? And might. People, some people say, well, he lost control. He got mad. No, I don't think he got mad. I just don't see that. It doesn't say that in the Bible. Yes, he got mad and threw him out of the temple. Yes, he whipped him with a cat of nine tails. Yes, he chased him away. But it had to do with the house of God. You see, one of the things that we need to do and that meekness will teach you, one of the most important things in life is unity. And peace. And sometimes, believe it or not, I know this is going to be hard to believe, 
if I just keep my mouth shut right here at this point, there'll be peace. And I won't break the unity of the Spirit. One of the things that we need to do is to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. If what I'm going to say is going to cause an issue and cause disfellowship and cause a break in the unity and a lack of peace, then maybe, maybe, just maybe, I should keep my mouth shut. I shouldn't do what I want to do. He did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. I look at that and, and I look at Moses and I realize when Moses was given a rod, he was mad, Numbers, 19, Numbers 20, 11, or 8 through 11. He took a rod after he had gathered the people. He got mad at what he saw and he smote the rock. instead of speaking to it. Isn't that what we do sometimes? We don't do exactly. God will tell us. God will impress on our spirit. Do it this way. Say this. Don't say that. Don't, don't get physical. Don't, don't react. Somebody said to me one time, nobody makes me anything. I make myself what I'm going to be. Well, <laughs> I don't see that. <laughs> because without the Holy Ghost, I don't know about you, but it's, I'm going to mess up. Yes, right? Without the power of the Holy Ghost in me, leading me and guiding me, uh, that's not a true statement, is it? Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says, The fruit of the Spirit is this. It's love, it's joy, it's peace, it's long-suffering, it's gentleness, it's goodness, it's faith, it's meekness, it's temperance. Against such, there's no law. That's power under control. That's a character. You can't tell me that you really love me when you're blowing off all the time, right? How are you going to believe that I really love you when I'm losing control and screaming at you all the time? Are you going to believe me? Or are you going to just kind of, uh, you know what, I'm going to go to the other room right here and, you know, let you cool down and we'll talk, we'll talk later, maybe next week. Brother, if a man be overtaken in a fault, how many has been overtaken? We've all been overtaken, right? And how many have had somebody come up to them and fig figuratively speaking, take a baseball bat and smack you with it? <laughs> More than once, right? You still have the calluses you've been hit so many times. But that's not what the Bible says. In the book of Galatians 6 and 1, restore in the spirit of meekness. Restore in the spirit of me. In other words, when I see you at your fault, you know, one of the things that I've learned so, so strongly is that you know what you've done wrong, right? And you don't need me telling you. You may need me helping you to get out of what you did wrong, but you don't need me browbeating you and letting you know I know what you did wrong. You know... I know, and you know I know. Now, what are we going to do about it? Well, meekness says, let's, let's get this thing and overcome it by the power and the strength of God. With meekness, I instruct you and say, look, this is what the Word of God says. What do you want to do? Because it's ultimately your choice, right? Whether you want to do what the Word of God says or, or not. And no matter how much I browbeat you, it's not going to help, is it? Well, what's the opposite of meekness? What is the opposite of power under control? Well, you say, well, it's the lack of power under control. Well, what's that look like? James 1.21 says, Therefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. So the opposite of being in control is to just kind of 
fly off. Let it all do whatever you want to do and, 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 you know, be whatever you want to be and act whatever way you want to act and, and you have to deal with it. Well, you know what? That's not necessarily true, is it? I don't have to deal with it. And you don't have to deal with me if I'm doing that. You can pray for me, please. <laughs> please. But you don't have to put up with it. And neither do I. But there's a right way to do it. And in meekness, we should instruct those that even oppose themselves. Right? First Galatians we know these scriptures, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, strath, strath. <laughs> That's a mixture of right, wrath and strife. Okay, wrath and strife, seditions and heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, rivalings, and such like. As I tell you before, I've told you in times past, that they that do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. They shall not. And yet, one of the things that we notice in the book of Matthew is that one of the things that, one of the people that inherit the earth is who? The meek. Those that have it under control. Those that knows what's going on. And yes, there are problems. And yes, there are situations that we can get upset about but be careful how you do it. We can be angry and sin not. I'm still under control. I'm upset and I'm angry about the situation, but I'm not going to lose control. I'm going to control who I am to best help you or whatever, vice versa. Titus 3.2 says, To speak evil of no man, don't be a brawler, but be gentle, showing all meekness to all men. So if I come on you and start speaking to you and, and wanting to fight you, I'm not being gentle. I'm not being meek. I'm being arrogant and proud and, and whatever it is I am, right? But I'm not going to be what God wants me to be, and that's power under control. Colossians 3.12 says it is the elect of God, as the children of God, we should put on holy beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, and meekness and long-suffering. It's not something that I was born with. It's something that I have to put on. It's something that I have to become. It's something that I have to cultivate in my life and make it grow. It's just not there by chance. I have to put it there in my life. And, and I'm sorry to say this, it's not always easy. Sometimes, and, and it seems, what's Brother Harper call them? Grace developers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're all looking at me smiling. But sometimes God will put people in your life the Bible says in the Pro book of Proverbs that iron sharpeneth iron. What's that mean? It means that God's going to put somebody in my life that's going to make me better. Yes. Better at who I am, better at what I am, better at what I'm doing. He's going to put something better in my life. And sometimes, how do you make a diamond? Pressure. Pressure. Pressure, huh? Something rubbing and, and making it pressure and making it hot and making it stand out better. Well, God will do that in our lives. He'll bring somebody into your life that, that will that rub you the wrong way. Sand on you, if you would. Take a, a buffing rag and not just buff your head, right? <laughs> but buff your spirit, buff your soul to make you a better you. We need to praise God for those kind of people because that's what we need in our life is somebody to make us better. Lewis asked me one time, uh, how can I, how, how did he ask me? 
He asked me basically why I hang out with people that are better than me. And I said, because I want to become better. I want to get higher and brought up higher. So I hang out with people that are stronger than me, so I get stronger. I hang out with people that are smarter than me, so that hopefully some of that wears off on me and I get a little bit smarter. I hang out with people that are, are got meekness and got gentleness and got humility in their life. So I become that. Because I see them and I see me and I say, not quite yet. I got to keep working on me. I got to keep working on me. And that's what we have to do. And, and I think, this is just me speaking. I think that's what meekness is like in our life. We have to keep working at it. Yes, I'm going to have days that I'm going to have a meltdown, right? But I need to get back up and put myself back together and say, okay, God, I'm sorry I melted down, right? Now help me. Cool me off a little bit and help me go in the direction you want me to go and not lose it. I would hate to be like Moses right at the crusp and then lose it because something I did, something I said, something I reacted to that I should not have reacted to, something that got me and I said something I shouldn't have said. Let, let me read the scripture. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called. Walk worthy. And that's where most people stop with that verse, right? But it goes on. How do you walk worthy of the vocation wherein you're called? You do it with lowliness and meekness, long-suffering and forbearing one another in love. You do it with meekness. You do it with power and control. Maybe you're called to be the big shot preacher. That didn't come out right. Maybe. <laughs> Look, here, let, 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 me be, let me be blunt. I knew a man, and it wasn't me, that bragged about how great a ministry he had. And he's no longer in church at all. I don't know what happened. I just pray for him and ask God to bring him back in. And I don't know even where he's at at this point, physically, mentally, spiritually. But I know one thing. He wasn't serving God with the right spirit or with lowliness and meekness. He wouldn't have acted that way. He wouldn't have said those things. He would have been more humble, more gentle, more meek, right? Anyhow, verse 3, chapter 4 of Ephesians. Serving God with lowliness and meekness, long-suffering, forbearing, and love one toward another, verse 2. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I believe with all my heart that if I am endeavoring to be a meek man, and have power under control. I'm going to endeavor to do what God said, and that's keep unity. And keep it, because where there's unity, there's generally going to be peace, right? Because that's more important than what I've got to say. That's more important than what I want to do. If what I want to do is going to break fellowship and break unity, maybe it's not that important to do it. Maybe it's not that important to say it. Maybe it's not that important to be whatever it is I think I want to be if it's going to break the unity and the bond of peace in the kingdom of God. Maybe I just need to examine myself and see where I'm at and see who I am. Right? I mean, that's blunt. That's simple. I'm just a simple guy. And I keep things up where we can understand it. At least I try. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes 7, 8, and 9, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Verse 9, So don't be hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of a fool. 
Better is the end of a thing than the beginning if it's patient, if it's meekness under power under control, if it's, if it's becoming the thing, the person, the, 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 the new man that God wants it to be. Better is that end. And you're not going to get there by being haughty or proud or angry. Because anger, it just isn't going to get you where you want to be. Is it? How many have been angry and then wish they weren't? <laughs> and said, oops, I should have just kept my mouth shut there. That's God dealing with you. It's God showing you that we need to get better. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. I may not have been where I am today at the beginning, but I know where I'm at now and I know where I got to be. And I'm still working on that, right? And to be hasty in spirit isn't going to get it. To be soon angry isn't going to get it. I need to be patient and long-suffering and learn meekness, learn power under control. 2 Timothy 2.24 says, The servant of the Lord must not strive but to be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patient. What's that mean? Some of us learn different than others. And I need to figure out how to teach you what I need you to learn in the Word of God. And, and so whether I'm gentle or meek or, or, or patient, I need to learn what the Word of God is going to get to you and how to get it to you. Right? I don't know any other way to put that. But the servant of the Lord, I'm not, I'm not gonna, it's not going to work for me to get up here and use the Word of God and beat us over the head with it, is it? You're just going to get mad at me and turn, turn me off and, and shut the door and slam it in my face and turn the, turn the thing off. And You're not going to listen, are you? But if I do it with love, if I do it with patience, if I do it gently, if I do it with power under control, you'll get the message, won't you? Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. Maybe not next week. But it's going to get there. I remember one time a young man came up to me. Well, he's younger than me. I guess, okay, he's younger than me. And, and he said, I, I still remember what you taught me back in Sunday school 25 years earlier. He said, you were the only one that could get through to me and the bunch of us. He said, you weren't mean to us. And I looked at him and I smiled and said, oh, but I wanted to be. <laughs> And he just kind of smiled and he said, I love you. <laughs> and I thought, well, you know what? It's nice to hear that stuff. Because that lets you know that you're doing it the right way, at least sometimes. You know, sometimes we still get mad and we, we, we use the proverbial baseball bat and smack you over the head. And all that does is cause hurt feelings and disunity and problems that need to be even more fixed. That didn't sound right. Problems that need to be dealt with down the road, aren't they? Let me close with this scripture. 1 Peter 3, 10 through 12. For he that will love life and see good days. How many wants to do that? And you know what you got to do? Shut up. <laughs> the scripture is a little bit nicer. It says, let him refrain his tongue from evil and let his in his lips that they speak no guile. Or in other words, put your upper lip against your lower lip and hold it tight. I like how David put it. He said, Lord, put a guard on my mouth that I don't speak the wrong thing. Right? Verse 11. Let him hate evil, eschew evil, and do good. And let him seek peace and ensue it. How are we going to seek peace if we don't have power under control? How are we going to have good days and, and, and love life if we don't learn to control who we are? Right? Verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. I want to see good days. I want to have a good life. 
I need to learn to keep my mouth shut. And I need to learn not to do evil. And I need to learn to follow God. And I need to learn to do what the Word of God says because this is the instructions of life. Not everything that we're here and out there. It, it, this is what's going to lead us to where God wants us to be. Amen? Lord, we're so thankful for this night. We're so thankful for all that you've done for us. We're so thankful, O oh God, for helping us to be what you've called us to be. Lord, we ask you to go with us and to be strong with us, O oh God, and to help us to be the people that you want us to be. Lord, keep our pastor safe and keep him safe on the roads, God. Lord, we ask you to put blessings in each and every one of our lives and to strengthen us and to fill us full of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody say amen. amen. Remember services Sunday. Pastor will be back. So behave yourselves. <laughs>